Here's a very nice specimen of the uh, Osborne 1. We're going to open up the uh, front panel, show what it looks in, like inside. The Osborne was one of the first uh, computers that came completely bundled with software. Adam Osborne was pretty clever in bundling about $1,700 worth of software into this machine, which uh, sold for quite a bit less than that. It was a very, very nice design and did very well for a while, and then it uh, died out rather quickly due to the competition from IBM and probably others. But it was a luggable computer and the first, uh, one of the first ones fully bundled, ready to go with, with lots of different options and uh, commercial software built into the system or bundled with it. As you see here, it's a luggable computer, fairly heavy, the cord stored in here, packaged up very nicely. Um, Osborne made several computers, this was the first one, he made an Osborne II and an executive, perhaps others. The company flourished for a few years, like I said, and then uh, uh, sort of just died away, but it was a wonderful concept while it lasted. And continuing to disassemble, there were seven screws around the front panel that we took out. And we loosened the set screws in here. They're in by Allen screws. And hopefully now we can get the front panel. And there comes the front panel. So we're one more step in getting that chassis out. See what we have to do now to get the chassis out. Well, continue our effort to disassemble the unit. We finally uh, got the front panel off. And we found the culprits holding the unit in. And they're some screws off here to the side. You see one here on the lower main frame. And one up here. Actually there's supposed to be two of those. One there and one down there. However the unit only has two of them. If we take those out the chassis should slide right out. In order to further disassemble the Osborne 1 there's four screws that hold the motherboard to the bottom part of the metal frame here. Let's take these four screws out. We're going to do that and you'll see the motherboard outside the computer. Well here's the Osborne one outside of the case. The two floppy drives, five and a quarter inch floppy drives, five inch uh, CRT, the motherboard which contains the CPU and the memory. There's only one card in the computer in addition to the electronics that controls the CRT and the power supply. Here's a little better look at the CPU card, or actually it's the motherboard because there's only one board in the whole computer. Down at the lower part are the input-output connect, input -output connectors which come out of the front panel. There's a memory bank, read-write memory bank, four rows of chips. There's a connector above that. And you see an EEPROM there and an EEPROM, serial parallel controllers. And there's a Z80 microprocessor chip and all the control chips. And there's a lot of standard uh, TTL logic circuitry on this board. It wasn't a particularly efficient design, but it was an effective design and it did work. In fact, it was a very popular computer for a while. Very, very popular. Here's the bottom of the Osborne 1 with the motherboard laid out in front. And all you basically see is the bottom of the power supply card over here to the left. Let's take a look at the back. Here's the handle for carrying the unit. Zoom in on the nameplate. You see the Osborne name, the on-off switch, a little reset switch there. And you see the serial number 12,128. That could be the literal serial number. It could be serial number 128. It could be serial number 2,128. It's hard to tell without doing some research. But this is uh, also a clever little cover over this with the power cabling in there too. Hello, this is David Larson. 
member of the LCF group. Thank you for watching our little video.